Hi, in this video I'll tell you about how to make a formal poster in animal behavior. And so I'm going to move to our Blackboard site <clears throat> for our Agonistic Behavior in Spiders project. You all have collected data and analyzed it and even made some graphs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have you tell the story of this experiment to write about what this experiment was about, how it fits in with current literature, and what results or what, what results and conclusions you can make about agonistic behavior in male spiders based on your study. And so we are really in week six, creating a formal poster about the spider experiment. So I clicked on that. And <clears throat> information for your formal poster is where you want to start. This uh, slide or this um, Google Doc tells you what you need to do for your formal poster. And it's pretty straightforward, but there are several um, links that can be really useful as well. And so your Agonistic Behavior in Spiders poster assignment is an individual assignment. You may use the collective analysis worksheet that you've done as a part of your individual poster. But you have to write your poster yourself. You may use the graphs that you made collectively in your poster also. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to tell the story of our experiment of, in this case, how do we go about, um, or how do we, uh, um, <laughs> what was our experiment about? Our jumping spider experiment in which we looked at male-male contests and asked the question, does size influence behavior and outcomes in male-male contests? And secondarily, uh, do the presence or absence of female cues affect male-male contests in any way? Those are kind of the interesting questions we wanted to address. You're going to talk about our research. Tell us what you found and explain it all in a single page poster that you create. And so down here you can see there are some links that you might find helpful. One of them is an example of a formal poster that Dr. Henshaw made. Let's take a look at that first so you can get a feeling for what it looks like. So here's a, a PDF of this poster that he made. First thing you notice probably is the color. There's a lot of color. There are some pictures here. Um, there's a title on the top with um, Dr. Henshaw's name and his affiliation. And um, you see some graphs that stand out with uh, some descriptions about what happened or what the graphs are about. And also you see the different sections of uh, a poster that you'll be making as well. You're going to have an introduction and background section. This will give some background information about the project you're interested in, in this case, agonistic behavior in spiders. Uh, you may have some research. You should have, uh, you should cite some other people's research that is related to this topic, maybe in general about um, uh, sequential assessment in, or in animals in general, or more specifically about other researchers who've studied agonistic spider in, I mean, agonistic behavior in jumping spiders. Um, and then you should end the introduction with a description of your hypotheses that you're planning to test. Uh, Dr. Henshaw here ended with the question that he wanted to address. Uh, or you could talk about the two specific hypotheses that you, um, that you are testing in this experiment. So your last paragraph should really describe those hypotheses. Uh, you'll need a method section. The method section is the section that in which you tell us what you did. It has to be brief. This is a very, this is probably the most difficult thing about a poster. It has to tell us what you did, how you did it, and <clears throat> it has to be very brief. The results section will have a series of graphs and descriptive captions that describe the results, um, the patterns you see in the graphs that you're showing and give us information about the 
uh, statistical test that you used in that particular um, in that particular uh, graph. Okay, and a discussion section. The discussion section will be three or four or five paragraphs long, and this is probably the hardest component of a poster in my perspective. Um, and you need to, in the discussion section, revisit your hypotheses in the order that you presented them in the introduction and in the methods and in the results. You want to kind of mirror the order should stay the same. So we had two hypotheses for our experiment. I would expect you to have at least two paragraphs, maybe as many as three or four paragraphs in which you first tell us, hey, do the data in general support your hypothesis or not? And then what, uh, uh, how do the data fit with other people's research? And finally, after describing in several paragraphs um, whether your data support your hypotheses, the results of other people's work, and uh, last, uh, hey, what does it all mean? So are these, uh, do males act adaptively when they are faced with another male spider or, uh, or not? What do you think? Um, something that kind of gets back at kind of the general theory of agonistic behavior or contest behavior or um, a sequential assessment during contests. Go back to that theory and, and talk about how your data fit into that theory. Finally, a literature cited section. This should have um, all of the literature that you've cited throughout the poster. You need to have five different references that you specifically cited in your poster, probably in the introduction section and the discussion section. You need to cite all the authors in a literature cited section. You can't use et al down here. You need to have all of the pertinent information for each paper that you cite, and that includes the authors, the year, the title of the paper, the journal, the volume, and the page number from which that paper comes. And um, they should be consistent in their format. So I'm looking for consistency. If you have all capital letters for the uh, journal name in one reference, you need to have all capital letters for the journal name in the second reference. Okay, okay so let's take a look at um, the formal posters um, uh, the information you need to include in your uh, in your poster or the format for your poster. So if I click on this link, you get a little bit of information about what should go in each part of the poster. And this should help you kind of just sort out how to tell this story, right? I kind of gave you some information about that when we were looking at Dr. Henschel's example. But you should have an introduction and you should have several paragraphs in that introduction in which you establish the general topic. Um, I think of an introduction as being kind of a funnel that starts out broad and then narrows down. Um, you start with a broad topic. You move to maybe more specifically how, uh, how other people have studied this topic in your organism or in closely related organisms. And then you ask your questions. You describe your hypotheses that you plan to test. In the methods section, you need to tell us what you did. Now, this is a little bit of an unusual experiment because Dr. Henshaw and I actually ran the experiment. We gave you a methods section, essentially, that you can consolidate. And during your methods section, let's just talk about the experiment as something we did using the the. Um, pronoun we for what Dr. Henshaw and I did and what you did, okay? And we typically, in all of the poster, use first person active voice. So active voice, we did this, we did that, first person, we or I, okay? So let's use, let's say, we ran 10 trials in which we paired two males and using active voice instead of passive voice I mean passive voice you would say something like the spider was placed in an arena instead let's say we place the spiders in an arena <clears throat> a lot of people put a diagram in the method section to just make it clear what we're looking at probably don't need a diagram here or a picture, but you could use one if you wanted. And you should, 
in the methods section tell us that you statistically analyze the data, tell us that, um, <clears throat> you know, make sure that you remind us that you measured the length of the animals as well. Make sure that you're including all of the things that we did. In the results section, this is essentially in a poster just a series of figures. Maybe three, maybe four figures in which you display the data that you find the most interesting that you want and the most pertinent to answering the questions. And you're going to post your, your, your figure and then make a caption. And that caption should tell us the main um, patterns that you see in the data and um, give us the statistical analyses that are um, those that, that um, you describe in your caption. Tell us what the statistical analyses are. I will send you another example of how to write good captions for a figure. And, in your, and I usually write the methods and the results sections first. Then I move on to the introduction and the discussion. The discussion is where you actually interpret or explain your data. So do the data actually support your hypothesis? In other words, is, is it, do the data suggest to us that um, size affects male contest behavior? So are larger animals um, you know, more aggressive? Are they, do they do more grappling? Are the animals that win, are they the ones that tend to be larger? Uh, those kinds of um, questions. And secondarily, uh, what about female cues? You're going to need to interpret the data or explain whether your data fit with your hypotheses in this section. But then you also um, tell us how your results fit with other research on this topic. Okay. Uh, do they, are they surprising? Are they different than you expected based on other research? Are they very similar to? And give some specific examples here. Compare your data to specific examples. In your literature cited section, like I said, you must have five original research articles. So research articles here are articles that describe experiments that have been done and you need to cite them properly within the text but also cite them properly in your literature cited section and there's descriptions of how to do that in this handout okay in terms of after you've written your poster be sure that you edit your poster grammar and style are a part of the grading rubric we want you to write well. We want you to tell the story so that it's easy to read and interesting to read for, for, for me, who has to read 48 of, no, for, for everyone who's, in, who's reading it. Uh, make sure that you're spell checking and editing your material for proper grammar. Uh, things that are really easy to miss are things like italicizing species names. Be sure you do that. Other common errors to avoid are listed here using affect and effect incorrectly. If you're not sure which one to use, change the word. Use influence. There are ways to get around your grammatical problems, right? Um, using data. The word data is plural. So we need to say the data were collected. Actually, we would say we collected the data, <laughs> but in any case... Another problem that um, comes up a lot is people say, wow, the data prove my hypothesis to be true. Instead of using words prove and true, say that the data support my hypothesis. <clears throat> and there's a few other, um, few other things that are kind of common errors. Now, in terms of making the poster, if we go back to our uh, assignment here, creating a poster, we're going to ask that you create the poster in PowerPoint. PowerPoint is um, what we have access to. And to create a poster in PowerPoint, you can go to this document. The biggest thing that you need to do is um, follow these directions. But um, the, most, the, the most important thing to do at the beginning of creating your PowerPoint is to 
go to the design um, menu and change the slide size to the to a custom slide size and create a poster that's 48 inches wide and 36 inches in height. Now you're not going to print this out. Um, you could. We have printers on campus, and some of you have probably used them that are four you know that are four feet by three feet big. We're not going to do this. Um, in fact, you're not going to print them at all because you're going to submit them electronically. But you're basically making a poster as if you were making a poster for a for a uh, for a um, a conference that you'd go to. Like the there is a conference every year on campus that was virtual this past year, but the Student Scholars Day that you might participate in someday. This is essentially what you're going to be practicing doing when you're writing your poster and creating it. And so this tells you how to go about creating your poster. It takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of practice. Uh, you may use templates that are available, but make sure that you have each of the components in your poster. Make sure that you can follow your poster, like it flows well as, uh, as somebody looking at it once it's done. And here are some ideas about how to lay it out, how to make it better. And you may read those and um, use those as well. Okay. <clears throat> when you think you have a good poster, if you have time, you can have a friend edit it and look at it. We have done this in the past where we spend time in class editing each other's posters. And that really does help us. We don't have that scheduled in class this semester but it's a good idea to have someone else look at your work, right? And remember that your poster will be an individual submission, but you can work together on the analysis, which you already did and turned in, and on the figures that you decide to include in your poster. And you may say, wow, I have way too many figures. I don't have enough space in my poster. So then you'll have to decide how, um, what the best figures are for your poster. You probably will, will have th at least three, maybe you'll have four figures. That makes it really tight to fit everything in. You can decide which are the most important findings that you want to show in your poster. Sometimes that's tricky to figure out and you can ask for advice from uh, me or from Dr. Henshaw and that can help you, I hope. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much.